Hello and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, we'll take a look at a couple of different ways to calculate the number of years uh, that have elapsed between two dates. So, uh, if you want to set up some sample data, uh, go ahead and do that, pause the video, and then we'll pick it back up and create our formulas. Okay, so the first methodology to figure out how many years have gone by, let's say between September 1st of 2003 and October 17th of 2012, uh, we could do a, fo a formula like this. Uh, equals uh, B2 minus A2. Now, if we, if we started with something like that, well, we'd get this answer, which is actually the number of days. So what you have to remember about doing math with dates in Excel is that the unit of measurement is one day. So uh, this is at least telling me the number of days between those two dates but I'm really looking for years so I would modify this formula by putting the uh, B2 minus A2 portion in parentheses and then dividing by 365 and a quarter so 365.25 uh, because every year uh, every four years we have leap year so on average we've got an extra quarter of a day every year so that takes that original count of 3334 days and now tells me that the year count is 9.12, etc., etc. And then I could, I could trim that down, or rather reduce the number of decimal points that are being, being shown. Uh, one of the issues here is that, let's say that that number was closer to, to 10. Let's say the original date was oh, uh, March 3rd of 2003. So now it says 9.63 years and if I didn't want to show any decimals well now it rounds it to 10 which is inaccurate uh, so what we'd rather do is do something uh, that's going to give us just the round number of years there's a couple of ways you could do that you could then edit this formula to to put it inside the int function so the int function generates the integer portion of any number and it doesn't round so it just gives me 9.00. So the int function will trim off any, uh, any decimal places and just give you the whole integer. It doesn't round up or down, it just gives me the whole number part. So if we wanted to go that route, we have the int function, open paren, and inside our int function, we have uh, a pair of parentheses to do the subtraction, b2 minus a2, which we then divide over 365 and a quarter, and then close parenthesis on the integer function and we get our nine years for uh, the first set of dates and when I fill down five years for the next set. Uh, another method though that requires a little less maneuvering is using the date diff function so in column D I'm gonna write a different formula we'll do equals date diff and oddly unlike other Excel functions the date diff does not appear in the drop-down uh, I see other date functions, but not this one. Uh, all I get when I do an open print is a confirmation that it is an Excel function with this tag that appears. It also doesn't give me the helper text that let me know what my inputs or parameters are. Uh, but that's what we're here for. We're going to describe those. So the first parameter for the date diff function is the start date. So I'll start with A2, comma, B2 for the end date. So those are the first two inputs, start date and end date. Uh, one of the nice things about the date diff function is you can specify the unit of measurement that you're trying to calculate. So in this example, I want to calculate the number of years. So I'll put the letter Y in a pair of quotation marks and uh, close paren. And I get the same answer. So I get 9. Let's look at that formula again. Equals date diff open paren A2 comma B2 comma and then the letter Y in quotes tells the date diff function to calculate the whole years so I don't get any fractional parts I just get round numbers and then I can fill that down and I'll get five for the second date so a little bit less work in this formula than in the previous and the other advantage is that the date diff function has other arguments besides y for year which I've included for you here so you can calculate the number of days between two dates with a letter D instead of Y the number of months between two dates with an M instead of Y. Of course, we used Y to calculate the years between two dates. And there's some other uh, inputs you could use. So MD would calculate the number of days between two dates 
excluding the month and the year. So let's just take a look at that one. So if I want to know uh, days and uh, I don't include, um, so I'll say exclude month and year. So if I say equals date diff open paren and I refer to A2 uh, comma B2 comma and I want to know how many days there are as though those two dates were in the same month. Uh, then I would do uh, open quote MD close quote close paren so that tells me that there's 14 days between those two dates between the third and the 17th and, and that makes sense so it's some flexibility that I don't have otherwise um, if I want to know the number of days between two dates excluding the year so uh, I'd like to include all the months in between March and, and October but I, I don't want to count the fact that one date was in 03 and the other date was in 2012. So I would use the YD function. So the YD function excludes the year from my date calculation and in essence tells me that there are 228 days between uh, March 3rd and uh, October 17th, but it doesn't count the number of years in between. Okay, And then YM is the number of months between two dates excluding the year so if I did YM, then it tells me there's seven months between March and October, and there's nine months between March and uh, January of the next of the next year, which makes sense. So I'll put it back to what the label says. I want to know excluding the number of days, excluding month and year, uh, which would be MD. So that is the date diff function. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Uh, uh, please tune in again soon for more Excel videos. Have a great day.